Ever had one of those days where your computer hates you and everything breaks? Well, I'm having one of those days, so um, <laughs> bear with. So I, I decided to um, install a new version of Blender because um, I was just having some issues and I thought that it's an appropriate time to do it. Um, and it, it occurred to me actually to install a the non-main version of Blender, uh, you know, one of the experimental versions. Uh, when you're first starting out, that can be a little intimidating because if you don't know, you don't know. But it's actually super easy and I thought, hell, maybe I'll show you how. Uh, so when you're normally downloading Blender, you go onto blender.org, you click that button and then you hit that big blue button and it downloads an MSI and you click that and it just installs itself. Well, if you want an experimental ver uh, version of Blender, it's slightly different. So here's 2.930 beta. This is the version I want. I'm just going to click on that to download it. Obviously, this is a Windows only tutorial. I'm not a Mac guy. I'm not a Linux guy. Uh, I wish I was a Linux guy and I'm, you know, sorry to say I was a Mac guy. <laughs> No, I said bad about Apple. Um, I do love them. I do love some of their products, but yeah, I'm, I'm just not a Mac guy. Anyway, download that. And um, yeah, it's going to download you a zip file. Drag that out onto your desktop. Um, and what you're actually getting here is it's, it's a basically a portable version of Blender in the sense that you don't need to install it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so now we're looking inside the zip folder and there's a folder with the Blender version name, and that's all you need is to take that, drag it out, and drop it where you want it. So you could install this on a USB stick, but um, with these portable, sort of these non-main uh, versions of Blender, I just run them off my desktop. I have multiple versions running at any given time that I can jump back and forth between, and uh, I can close that down now. We now have the folder right there on the desktop, and if we uh, double-click into it, and it'll open on a different monitor because that's my life today, um, and we can see inside that folder. And the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and then I'm going to hold Alt and drop. And that's created a link, a shortcut between uh, this and this. So I don't have to go into the folder to open up that version of Blender. I can just double click that. Super lazy. Okay, so it's a fresh install of Blender. Um, and what I'm going to do I'm going to set this up and show you how I have my, my uh, you know, the very, very basics of how I have my Blender set up. Uh, so if you're having trouble following one of my tutorials, you know, you might be using a slightly different key setup or whatever. So uh, with no further ado, let's go to uh, key map. So I have it as right click, search, so rather than let you know, I, ha I have it set to right click select because right click select, um, firstly, I'm, a, I'm an old school Blender user. I've been using it for a long time before there was a left click option. I use right click select, not just because of the tradition of it, but also because if you separate your selection and manipulation to different key presses, you can't accidentally be selecting that thing next to the thing you wanted to manipulate. So if you're working on two vertices that are close together, you right click the vert you want and left click to manipulate. And for me, that's insanely powerful. I always struggled with selection and manipulation in other packages. I love that about Blender. Uh, I have my spacebar action set to search because being able to just do that and type in, you know, whatever I want means that I don't have to rely 100% on remembering where that damn button is. I just need to remember the word for the thing I want to do. So for instance, I could, you know, with this, I might want to subdivide it. So, oh, I need to be in edit mode, of course. Subdivide, and I've subdivided it. And then I can do that again and again. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's just, it, subdivide's a bit of an obvious one, but yeah, if you don't remember, you don't remember. And, and uh, you know, the search bar for me is is more valuable then playback, because playback for me, you know, I can do that, um, oops, with shift space. So I don't lose that functionality. I can just hit shift and space to playback. And, and that's just the way I prefer it. Uh, I also have tab for pie menu, always uh, ticked. Ah! That way I can tab in and out of edit and object mode and into sculpt mode in a very gestural sort of fashion. I like it. It works real well for me. Um, I mean, just being able to tab between those modes and then alt uh, middle mouse clicking to 
swoop between cameras. Oh, come on. That's some nice interface right there. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that said, so that's the, that's the main thing. If you do that, then you should be able to follow me uh, with no problems. Um, the other thing I like to do is, I mean, firstly, there's a million add-ons. Uh, actually, there's a couple of basic ones which should always be selected. So copy, copy attributes menu, tick that. That way I can, you can use control, uh, control C to copy certain things, um, which is very, very useful. Um, F2, because F2 is, um, so look, I could actually, here we go. So with that, I can go control C and I've got copy attributes. And then with F2, F2 allows me to uh, select a face, fill, fill. Um, you know, it, it's a really useful tool um, in basically every circumstance. And I don't think I ever have that. Oh, I don't think I ever use Blender without F2 enabled. Um, there are plenty of ones which don't come with Blender, which I also use a lot, but I will disable them and enable them per project as I need them. Uh, and anything else? Yeah. Going to very quickly look through to viewport selection and I turn off OpenGL depth picking. Um, that's a new one. I'm, um, basically, I was just having some very slow bone selection um, issues. That sounds so wrong. Um, when I'm when I'm rigging and I'm trying to select bones, occasionally there'll be like a one to two second pause between um, between the selection. And apparently that's down to the OpenGL depth picking. So I've turned that off for now as an experiment to see if that helps. And so far looks good what else do i do i don't know what else do you do why am i talking to myself in stupid voices lord knows anyway i think i leave most of that as standard uh, these i will toggle as i as i'm working i really need to be able to create a shortcut for these though um also sometimes i will turn this to constant uh default interpolation if i'm blocking scenes and stuff that can be very useful um, the rest of this is pretty good. Emulate numpad can be great, um, particularly if you don't have a numpad, although most of the numpad functionality for me is covered with the alt, um, hold, alt and middle mouse button to swoop between cameras. That covers most of my camera switching, which is really useful. The only other thing is if you're using Blend without a numpad, you don't have the uh, numpad period key or full stop key, uh, which allows you to focus in on stuff. And I tend to always set that up as a hotkey on my express keys of my Cintiq because I'm always using a Cintiq. I've got a, a mobile studio pro as my sort of home computer. And then uh, I've got my main Cintiq in the office. So I'm, I've always have an express key set up for, um, uh, for the period key on the numpad. If you don't have, you know, if you, um, if you don't have uh, a numpad and you don't have express keys and all that sort of stuff, set it up some, you know, f for another key. It's the most important key in Blender as far as I'm concerned. You don't just use it in the viewport. You use it um, in the graph editor, in the dope sheet. You can use it in, oh, excuse me. You can use it in the dope sheet. You can use it in the graph editor. You can use it in the outliner. Um, that, that focus sort of button is just so useful. You can use it in edit mode you know, to focus on certain elements. It's, it's just, I'm, it's every other button push for me. So that's vital. Uh, what else? Yeah, this is all pretty much, pretty much of a muchness. Um, I will sort of, you know, uh, set up your, whether you're using CUDA or optics and what, what device you're using for rendering is, is very useful. Ooh, memory limits, uh, memory cache limit that can go sky high as far as I'm concerned. Um, actually here's a trick. So obviously we want that to that number to multiply in that in that way that uh, numbers do when you're computing. I've forgotten the term. Oh God, uh, 64, 28, uh, 128. You know, um, there's a multiplication that is is appropriate. Uh, so rather than entering just an arbitrary number, I will just hit times four, and that will do the math for me. And you can do that in any box in Blender. So asterisk. So I, again, if I want to get that back down to what it was, I can just go slash four to divide by four. So yeah, I will always set this 
little high. Um, and yeah, that's all good for me for now. Um, auto run Python script. I like to have that on because I like to live dangerously. Um, and what else? Sometimes I will have load UI turned off, particularly if I'm working with people who make very bad UI choices. <laughs> I'm looking at you, John Ball. Uh, so basically some people who, uh, who I work with like to have, uh, they never have the outliner open. They just have various panels that I would never use. And that can be quite frustrating. So I will set up my own UI and turn this off. And that way, when you load an, someone else's Blender file, it just loads into your UI. It doesn't just change all your panels. That's super useful. Um, if you don't like it when people mess your panels around. Um, I'm such a child, and I? It's not mine. I don't like it. Uh, other things to do. Um, setting up a script folder. So I can just open this up and navigate to the script folder. I thought I'd reset this to factory settings before I did this. And uh, yeah, clearly it didn't work because I just did a dry run beforehand. And <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I, I always have a Dropbox. I've got a, a Dropbox account and in that I have a Blender folder. You could do this with a free account. It shouldn't matter. I have a Blender folder with lots of um, assets that I will reuse um, and lots of bits and bobs that I need for my Blender in. Um, and in that, I have a script folder, which is where I keep all my add-ons. And I will always set that up in the favorites. So I'll navigate to the folder and just hit plus, and it will add that to your favorites list. Also do that with your current project. So my current project at the moment is <sighs> brain no work uh, on Gameland Master. So I will add that in there. And that way I don't have to search around through Windows and or menus to get to what I'm doing. I'm, I open up Blender, click that, and I'm straight in. Um, and that's that's great. You know, and that will populate throughout all the other sort of um, file manager menus. Um, so yeah, set that up. That's good. Um, and also setting up an image editor. Here, I've got it set up to, um, to Affinity. Look, I'm just going to delete that path so I can show you. So find the... Um, exe file for your uh for your image editing software so mine's affinity so i could just go here find affinity and good more open file location so i've already found it there i'm just showing you how and then you can see there's a little arrow on this fella if i make this um extra large oh well that didn't work thanks a bunch do as i say not as i do um Where's he gone? Anyway, you can see these are shortcuts. Uh, they're not. Um, they're not the actual file. So if I go on here and open file location again, now we have a path. And we have an exe. So we'll go copy this path, and I'll paste it in. And I know it was backslash photo dot exe. Okay, so that link now allows us to do something stupid like this. I say stupid, it's, it's, it's very useful. <laughs> it's not stupid at all, it's a very practical step to do. We'll call this sausages. I don't know why. I have children, that's my excuse, and also a reason that you shouldn't kill me for my bad sense of humour. Sausages, there we go, the first file. I'm just going to click save as, so you have to save it before this will work. Uh, I'll just save it out to my desktop. There we go. Sorry, that was off screen. Again, it keeps, all my windows keep opening on the wrong monitor and I haven't quite, I told you it was one of those days, so I haven't fixed it yet. Anyway, now I can click edit image externally and it will load Affinity Photo for me. I don't have to go and find it and drag it and open it in. It's a straight link to there and I can then manipulate this. Uh, I've forgotten how to use it because I'm dumb and I don't use it much. Let's just do a big X through the middle and we can save that again. And then we can reload our image. So, you know, it's useful to have that stuff set up. And I think that's about it for me. I think that's about it. Yeah, so that's 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 the stuff that I typically set up immediately. There's definitely a, a handful of other add-ons, but... Oh, Node Wrangler, there you go. If you haven't got Node Wrangler, uh, you're not blending right. So Node Wrangler comes with Blender. You don't need to... All of these add-ons I've shown so far 
are they come with blender they're just not enabled by default um oh there are so many others but i, I just i can't think of them right now um so anyway do that save your breaths and that's it and that's 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 blender all set up and ready to go the way i use it oh there is one other thing i should probably mention as i said i'm a cintiq user because i'm dead posh and i found one cheap on ebay um so i've got a this classic pen the uh, this little narrow in the grip which i prefer i've just got it set up to right click is is you know is this you can't see nothing and it's out of focus if i go close and i don't want to do this <laughs> i'm being really dumb um so i'm just going to go big screen there we go and there's probably not enough light here but yeah so this button is right click this one is middle click that is left click and i don't really use the eraser because i don't know i just don't i actually don't even know if it, how much functionality the eraser has in blender but uh, as you can see so right click middle click left mouse click um and in the options i will have click and tap uh, enabled not hover click so that way i have to hold the button and tap to actually trigger a, a key press it's not holding the pen over the screen and just tapping the button okay so that's that's how i like to use it um and i think there's only ever one other thing really is i don't have windows ink enabled because i like my life easier and i yeah windows ink is one of those things it interferes with a lot of stuff sometimes you need it enabled for certain functionality but you know whatever um i'm not gonna go through my express keys and stuff but i do have um one of the the like i've got like it's got a a jog wheel on this Cintiq and I have that typically set to um, to do the middle mouse button scroll wheel stuff um, doesn't always work that well but anyway that's uh, that's my setup um, I hope that helps I'm trying to make something positive of a morning where everything is broken um, and yeah Windows updates man I, I, I love Windows but oh, Windows updates kill me now uh, so yeah um, I hope that helps you and see you next time